Hi, my name is Mike Henderson, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, bee vacuum today. I have a tutorial on how to build it, and this is really just a introduction to uh, help you understand what a bee vacuum is and how it's used. The bee vacuum is a box that is the size of a long strip hive, so that's 19 and 7 8 inch in that direction. 16 and a quarter across the front. It consists of uh, two parts, the top and the box. In the top, we have uh, hardware cloth, one eighth inch hardware cloth, and this is used as a diffuser for the vacuum. So the vacuum is mounted on the top and it sucks air through and you suck the bees in through the vacuum port here. Now bees, when you're doing that, if you have a small hole, maybe with a piece of screen over it, the bees can get sucked against that screen. They will block the vacuum and will also kill the bees. So by having a large area like this, even if bees cluster in one part of the screen, there's still a lot of other area of the screen to, uh, for the air to come through. The bottom part of the box is where the bees will be uh, caught when you vacuum them in. <coughs> the uh, box has a sliding bottom, removable bottom, and this is used to transfer the bees to the, a hive when you get them back to the bee yard. The front of the box has the vacuum port, standard two and a half inch port for standard vacuum hoses, and it has a slide so you can close off that port after you've gotten the bees into the hive, into the bee vacuum. Um, so you would slide it like this. When, say when you're going to transport the bees to the, uh, to the bee yard. The top consists of a hole that the vacuum plugs into and another slide that's used to regulate the amount of suction. So uh, the vacuum can have too much suction and you don't want to injure the bees by sucking them up really hard. You want to just uh, kind of have a gentle suction to pull the bees into the bee vacuum. And you can adjust the amount of vacuum by moving this slide to uh, Bleed out some vacuum. There's a uh, weather stripping here that's used just to seal the top to the box. The vacuum that I'll use is this DeWalt uh, 20 volt portable and it hose disconnects, connects right into there. I use a 5 amp hour battery. And I find that uh, gives me plenty of time to, to do the vacuuming. But if you really are concerned about running out of juice, you can carry a spare with you. Uh, having Connecting to an electric vacuum is not very practical for many of the places that you wind up going to get bees. Uh, after you have collected the bees into the box, if you're going to transport them in something like an SUV, the best thing to do is take the top off because the one thing you don't want to do is have the bees get too hot. Uh, if you're going to transport them in something like a pickup where uh, the sun is shining down, the best thing to do is to put the top like this crosswise and uh, you'll have lots of air being able to get in there and keep the bees cool. Uh, the bees can deal with cold pretty well but excessive heat will certainly kill too many of them. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to put this onto a, a long strip hive next. So uh, I'm going to take a break here and get the hive and, and we'll start over again. Okay, we're back. And what I have here, in addition to my puppy here, is a standard um, long strip brood hive, brood section. Uh, this is a 10 frame. And what the problem you get into when you uh, 
rescue bees or, or take them out of a, a house or whatever you're going to do, however you get them, is how to get them into the hive and have them stay in the hive. When you use a, uh, a regular bee vacuum or if you've gotten a swarm and you're going to try to transfer those bees into the hive, normally you take a few frames out and you try to dump them in. And the problem is when you do that, you're kind of disturbing the bees and they fly all over the place. If the queen winds up in the hive and happens to stay there, all the other bees will come back. But what often happens is that the queen flies off, she goes up in a tree somewhere, and then all the bees cluster around her, uh, just like you would have a swarm, uh, a hanging swarm. So what I find really works well is take a frame of brood from one of your existing hives. So go into a, a good, healthy hive, um, pull out a frame of brood from one of the brood boxes, preferably in the center, because that's where you're going to have most of your brood. Make sure you get all of the bees off of it, shake them off, brush them off. One thing you don't want to do is have the queen come with that, that frame of uh, brood. And then put that frame of brood into the brood box. Then take the bee vacuum, put it on top of that brood box, and remove the slide. <coughs> you can take the top off. You can look down into the hive and see what's going on because the bees are going to be in that main section. Uh, what you'll find is that if there is a frame of brood in there, the bees will almost always stay in the hive. They just will not, generally, will not abandon uh, brood. Now, the slot in the back here is 3 sixteenths of an inch, and that's actually big enough for bees to get through. You wouldn't normally have too much trouble, but I made a little stub slit, uh, slide that you can put in here that will prevent the bees from getting out. It will force them to go down into the main part of the hive. Uh, then, once you have all this established, you can put this top on, or you can put your standard uh, beehive top on, doesn't make any difference, and let it sit for about a day, 24 hours, and what you'll find when you go back, and you look in here, so the bees have all gone down into the brood box. There'll be no bees in the um, bee vacuum anymore. You can remove the bee vacuum, put your top onto the uh, brood box, and you have a, a hive going, developing, anyway. If you don't have a frame of brood that you can give them, you can try putting a, an excluder down here between the bottom and the brood box so that the queen can't get out. And if the queen is trapped in, uh, they'll pretty much, they'll stay. You want to make sure that you come back and remove that excluder after a few days or so after the bees get settled, because in addition to blocking the queen, of course, it'll block any drones that are developed in the hive. So you could technically leave the excluder for quite a while, because it's going to be a while before they are making any drones, but uh, you can't leave the excluder down there. So that's the, the bee vacuum. I think it offers a real advantage for the transfer of uh, bees from whatever you use to transport the bees that you rescue into a hive and improves the um, but the success of, of establishing hives from uh, bee rescues. After using the um, bee vacuum for a while, I ran into a little bit of a problem. And that problem was that I caught a swarm, a nice swarm, and I was able to vacuum them up with the bee vacuum, take them to a hive, put the bee vacuum on top of the hive, and uh, wait for the bees to migrate down into the 
high, but, but they didn't. What they did was start to make comb in the bee vacuum. So then I had to um, try to get the bees out of the bee vacuum, which of course meant shaking them out of the bee vacuum, and that caused upset to the bees, and eventually uh, they, they actually departed. So what I needed was a way to force the bees down into the hive body uh, from the bee vacuum, and I did that by making this portion here, making the uh, diffuser area a movable platform. So I have the diffuser with a hand grip here. I had put two hand grips on here, but I decided that being able to do this with one hand was a better approach. I have four toggles which allow me to lower this and I have string holding the um, panel, the diffuser, and that allows me to lower it uh, without having to go all the way down. So for example, if I have a lot of bees in the bee vacuum, I can push them down and this gives a distance of about two inches, a little over two inches from the bottom. I can then move to the next point, and this gives about an inch from the bottom. And if I go all the way, the movable part, the diffuser part, is actually flush with the bottom of the bee vacuum. So this allows me for a, um, a swarm, not a cutout, but a regular swarm, to be able to force the bees down into the hive body. In that case, what I would do is put a excluder at the bottom of the uh, brood box so that the queen can't get out. And I would leave it there until it's obvious that they're beginning to uh, make comb on the frames and are starting to, uh, to have some brood in the comb, that would indicate that they are really setting up household in the brood box. So that's about it. I guess you might call this the uh, bee vacuum version three, <laughs> since this other one was my second version of the bee, bee vacuum. Uh, we could possibly call this version three. Thank you.